Coming off of a season that saw some really good play early on, Corey Davis, five straight 100 plus yard games, then Ken became a little flat in the mid part of the season and really just took a nosedive in the last half of the season outside of a late season victory, and especially in week 18 where no one showed up and it was a complete and utter blowout. So as we get started here today, we have an off season where we have a lot of work to do. Clearly this roster is nowhere near where it needed to be after we finished the season two and 15. And a large portion of that was just really bad play. I feel like from the offensive line defense, I didn't think played too poorly. There were games that, yeah, they definitely didn't play well, but overall, I think the defense is still a lot further along than the offense. The offensive line definitely needs to see a lot of work done and hopefully we'll get that done here today. But before we jump into any of the off season stuff, do need to talk about a couple quick things that happened at the end of the season. One highlighting our one and only pro bowler in fullback Josiah DeGuara. And he's been a pretty solid player for us throughout this series. And it's nice to see him getting a little bit of some recognition. You can see the Pro Bowl appearance at the bottom of that list there. So he has seen some upgrades, which is really nice, which means we're probably going to keep him around. I feel like he's done solid in that role and potentially he might even need to play a little bit of some tight end as we move forward. Tight end is definitely a group that will most likely see a good chunk of change as well. As for the offensive line, Definitely getting rid of at least two of these guys. Wynn had a really bad season, as well as Note Boom. McAllister was hit or miss in his rookie year. He had some great blocks on the outside, but sometimes down the middle he struggled. Avila, kind of all right. And Dickinson did have some rookie growing pains, but he's a star dev, so that is good. But speaking of devs, if we jump over to the defensive side. We see that there are two new superstars as Adebo once again has seen a boost and hopefully this time it actually sticks around. If they decide to take away his or progression right after he got it again, this happened at the end of last year as well. If they do that, I'm putting it back at Superstar. He's had two straight phenomenal seasons and he deserves to be that Superstar. So he will definitely be keeping that. We also saw the edge rusher in Nick Bonito also move up to a superstar. He's been pretty solid on the outside. Sometimes he doesn't quite show up, but happens. Unfortunately, we did not get any development boost with Murray Jr. And surprisingly, he wasn't a pro bowler robbed for a second straight year. Defensive line is very young. The three we see here, Nick Bell, Luke Peake, and honestly, I always forget what Johnny Smith. All of them were rookies and they did fairly well. I still think we could use a couple of different guys to help out. Like Pierce was brought in to be a run stopper and potentially we keep him around as peak continues to develop. He is a star. We still don't know on Smith, despite all of his starts that he did get. As for the corners, Rice did not have a great rookie year over on this right hand side. He might get demoted to a nickel corner, depending on what happens in this off season. Safety's curse. Did well in the first half. He kind of disappeared the second half. And Durant, I'm fine moving on from him if we find a good guy. So there's a lot of work to do offensively, the skill positions. We're definitely going to need some new receivers. I imagine the only ones really sticking around would maybe be Quez Watkins and Nakua. Outside of them, eh, don't really care about the guys that we had. Unfortunately, Davis, like I said, started the season off really well. Five straight 100-yard games. Then started to struggle with some injuries and started to get locked down. So a whole lot of work to do as it's time for us to take a look at the actual stats from season two and kind of give us a better idea of where we need to go. First off, the worst offense, 32nd in the league, 24th defense. So all in all, bad. Need to do better. Bo Harold had 21 interceptions compared to 13 touchdowns. He completed less than 50% of his throws and... He's definitely not for sure our starting quarterback going into next year. We'll see what all our options are. Teddy B started a good chunk of the season and didn't do all too well either. The passing game in Madden is a little bit iffy to say the to say the best. Cam Akers did have a good year, had some injury in there a little bit, nothing too bad. We also kind of pulled him off the running game the later part of the season as we tried to figure out if we could do anything with the passing game, but 
He had a really solid year, about five yards of carry, three touchdowns. Bo Harrell did have two rushing touchdowns and another two fumbles. Kyron Williams, when healthy, was really good, but he's gonna be turning, I wanna say 25, probably need to find a different backup. Uh, Evans has been okay, nothing splashy. We did bring in Knight late on and it was okay. I mean, the outside of Akers, the running back group is fine. Receiving group already talked about, we're gonna have a massive overhaul. Corey Davis numbers are very much inflated for their first five games. He actually had more yards in the first five games than he had the entire rest of the season. Nine touchdowns though for him. Nakua coming in at number two. Those are more like wide receiver three or four numbers. So need to get those boosted. Cam Akers is our third best receiver. So it really shows the level of play that we got from Watkins, Claypool, and down the line. Not fantastic. A lot of work to do with the, uh, the specialist. As for the blocking, Wynn did give up 11. Now the numbers don't look as bad as they actually are. I think we threw out of a lot of sacks or scrambled away, counted as tackle for a loss, or just in general, the, the numbers aren't quite matching the actual play that we saw. But Wynn definitely struggled. Dickinson, as we talked about, struggled, and Noteboom struggled. Outside of those two, Avila and McAllister, I think were solid. And it's obviously hard to replace an entire offensive line. So I would like to keep McAllister in the starting spot at center, maybe move him out to guard. Potentially, we have been working on his power blocking. Avila, I think, is fine at right guard. But we definitely have some questions at left tackle. Dickinson struggled. And Win needs to be replaced. Note boom needs to be replaced. So two guys for sure need to be replaced. We'll see about a third. Defensively, Kenneth Murray, another 100 plus tackle season, 118. Curse was actually at 114. Graham at 85, not bad at all for a rookie who did not start the entire season. Rice also got stuck in there, which I think is why he would make a better nickel corner. As for tackles for a loss, we were led by Murray with 16, but Bonito was close with 15. Also see some from Curse, Okoronkwo there. In terms of our sack leader, it was Bonito who had 10 and a half. Seven for Okoronkwo, and he did pretty well when he was healthy. Peak had four. Most of those, I think actually all of those were in like two different games. And then Nick Bell, three and a half, need to see more from him. Smith with three, I think was fine. He wasn't brought in to, expected to be a big player for us, but he potentially could be. And then a few others down the line. Interceptions though, Paulson Adebo, a second straight year with at least five plus. He had six in this one. Jones had three, two for the rookie in Graham, and then one for Murray, Curse, and Durant. Though we did only force two fumbles this season, one by Adebo and one by Murray. Of those two, we only recovered one, and that was Nick Hampton. Kelvin Joseph did block one kick, and we had at least one safety, Kenneth Murray. And he also had a one and only touchdown on defense from the kicking game. Tanner Brown was actually really solid. Only missed one kick and it was a field goal. Couldn't tell you how far away it was, but either way, really good season from him. If you care about punting stats, we averaged only 38 yards a punt. So nothing fantastic, but there was a few games in there where we were messing with the sliders and the punting slider was broken. So eh, fine. But the big ones are in the team stats because individually we had some good guys. But as a team, we really struggled to come together. And as we take a look, we were the third worst in terms of total offensive yards gained. Only a couple teams did worse than us, one of which was the Broncos, who had near 550 less yards. When it came to the passing game, we knew it was a hard thing for us to even complete some passes. And once again, we were the third worst. The Titans and Giants had a little bit less than us. As for rushing, we were the least, despite having Cam Akers, as we talked about, we kind of pulled him back and outside of Akers, no one else was really running the ball all too well. We also scored the least amount of points on average per game, 15.4. The Broncos, which isn't a very good team though for us to try to be, they had 15 and a half. Passing touchdowns, again, third worst in the league, Broncos Titans below us, and rushing touchdowns, we had 11. Once again, the worst in the league, and the best had more than double. And obviously when you're not getting a lot of yards, you're not gonna get a lot of first downs either. Once again, the lowest amount in the league, 223 compared to the Jets who had the highest, we were about 100 less first downs. 
Defensively, we were slightly below average, I would say, in terms of yards given up with 5,821. The worst was the Seahawks, so we did a little bit better there at least. Though we did give up the fourth most amount of passing yards, 4,151. But the rushing defense was not bad. We were about 10th or so without counting. So honestly, the rushing defense played really well. I think that young defensive line did do well in stopping the run. In terms of points allowed though, we gave up the most by a good chunk as well. So need to do a whole lot better there. Jets had the best defense. They gave up about 300 less amount of yards compared to us. Though we were very competitive in the sack game as we would have, I would say around the top 10. 37 was what we had the best as the Dolphins and Steelers with 51. And in terms of interceptions, we're about middle of the pack, 14. Almost half of those going to a Debo himself. The Ravens did force a lot of fumbles. We, I would say, around average. We forced two, so we're in, we're in here somewhere. A lot of teams forced two, but really nothing splashy for us there. As for third down conversions, the least. 35% of the time we completed our third downs. You're not gonna score if you can't complete your third downs. For those that went for it on fourth down, we were also the third worst, so not good there. Though on two point conversions, 100%. We only attempted it once and we hit. As for red zone efficiency, once again, the worst in the league, 41%. So clearly we are struggling to convert much of anything. As for the defensive, we gave up points 37% of the time. I would imagine that's good. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's good because we had given up 81 defensive red zone trips, but we allowed touchdowns on only 30 of those. So overall, I wouldn't say that's actually too bad. We did give up some field goals. So the defense, once again, showing that they are a lot further down the line towards good than the offense. So we're gonna have to focus, I think, a little bit more offensively in this episode than defensively though. It's really BPA when it comes to the draft, and we'll see what free agency has in store for us. But let's finish off this season, season two. And it would officially finish with a 34-28 Super Bowl win for the Baltimore Ravens over the Cowboys. It's their third Super Bowl win. Lamar Jackson gets MVP. You could see the yearly awards over to the right-hand side, and I see at least the defensive rookie of the year is for a Jaguars guy. And because I went a little too far, we actually can't take a look at the yearly awards. But we at least know that none of our guys did end up winning any of those awards. We just couldn't see if Graham was in the running for any. So that, unfortunate. Should have checked that sooner. And once again, it did change the development boost that we got at the end of the season. So we saw earlier, but Bonito was a superstar. And it took him down to a normal dev. I don't understand why. Because he was awarded that. And then while going through the Super Week, they then take it all away. I don't like that. I don't think that's accurate because they gave it to him at the end of the season, not before then. So let's put the superstar back for both of these guys. And of course, I will do it on camera. So you see Nick Bonito back up to a superstar. And they even did the same for Adebo, putting him back at star. It just doesn't make sense to me. You just gave it to him and then you take it away. They've done that to him twice. He's gonna go back to having that superstar. Dude has deserved it. He's played phenomenal. So once again, we'll boost him back up to a superstar, rightfully so. If you were gonna take away any development, you gotta say that that's Dickinson. That it probably should go down to a normal, but they didn't do that. As for the defensive line, they did lower Luke Peak from a star to a normal. I can kind of understand that. As for Smith, we never saw what he actually was, so I am curious. I'm assuming they just lowered him from a star to a normal. So that does hinder their further development and might depict or might change a little bit on how we go after some free agents, perhaps, because now no longer any of the defensive line guys that we got, the young guys, have any development traits. So we'll we'll see as we move forward. But the first official thing for us to do in the offseason is re-sign our players, closed free agency. And I don't imagine we're gonna bring back maybe any of these guys, Byron Jones. We're gonna move on from, he's 32. 
maybe we bring him back. Who knows? We do need someone on the outside because we're going to move Rice to the nickel corner. Ernest Jones, we've replaced with Graham. So we'll see what's out there. Michael Pierce has regressed a little bit. Again, want to see what all is out there. Zonovan Knight, same thing. We brought him in for a little bit. Got a decent look. Mostly just seeing if any of these guys we want to bring back and no. So we'll tell all of them no. Potentially we'll come back to maybe some of them in open free agency. Definitely not note boom. Stetson Bennett also going to be leaving the squad. Now as open free agency begins, we have a whole lot of money to spend. 131 mil. And at the top here, we do have some decent offensive linemen. We have Betonio, a 90 overall. Tyron Smith, who would probably just be here for one season, an 88. Teller would be here for a few seasons at an 87. So there's definitely some top offensive linemen we could go after. Now we've talked about possibly needing a new quarterback. Tua is available. Surprisingly, Miami did not keep him around. That could be really intriguing. I don't think I've ever really played much with a left-handed quarterback. But this could be a solid pickup here for it. Tua, 87 throw power, so not a deep guy, but has some solid accuracies, good awareness, some mobility as well. That is really intriguing and definitely not something I was expected. He's a top 10. He's currently ranked the ninth best quarterback in the league. He's only a star, but that works with Madden. As long as you have a star or more, your quarterback actually functions properly. Now, there are eight teams interested. He doesn't have a whole lot of interest in us, but really none of these quarterbacks do outside of Zach Wilson. And I do not see us going after Zach Wilson. Any of the other options would potentially be Goff, but I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm not, I'm not feeling a Goff situation here. Does have good throw power and still has good short accuracy. You're going to drop off in the mid, uh, the middle and deep compared to Tua. Tua is very intriguing. Let's just put in an offer here and kind of see how he feels. So they're looking at a range of 36 to 43 mil by the end of his contract. So this would be a very large contract to give. Plus with us not being very high up on his board, do we trust he'd even want to come here in the first place? We could bump up the numbers a little bit here. See if he has any interest. It's yellow. I'm at least going to put out an offer, but it looks like he really wants to go play for the Houston Texans who have a young quarterback themselves in Stroud. If they do go with Tua, potentially maybe a trade would even kind of be in order there. As for the other skill positions, we don't need to go after a running back though. There are some decent guys here on the board. Receiver, we could try to find a number one. Elijah Moore is open. Rondale Moore, if we want to go after the other Moore. Though, actually, they're very similar in size. For some reason, I thought Elijah Moore was a bit taller. There is Deontay Johnson. Doesn't quite fit on the older side. There is Joshua Palmer. Brandon Cooks on the older side. And KJ Hamler. There is Terrence Marshall. I've always kind of liked Terrence Marshall. 76 overall at 25 years old. So if we're looking at who has the best release, there's really not a whole guys with a lot of interest, at least in us immediately. There is Michael Thomas, doesn't have a whole lot of speed. Tim Patrick has at least a little bit more speed there. And there is Joshua Palmer who was just playing. I'm proud to say he was part of the Chargers, if I'm not mistaken. So he potentially could be a better fit just again doesn't have a whole lot of interest. He's looking at about seven and a quarter mil a season. His ratings at this point honestly aren't too bad. Solid hands, good route running, has the release. He could definitely be a solid guy, kind of take over that Corey Davis spot for us. Might be a position we need to put an offer in at. Now there's only one other team currently interested, so it may not have to be the best offer, but we could definitely put in a little something here, bump it up a little bit. It's not a fantastic offer, but we're on the board and it's much higher than the Giants. Now, as for the offensive line, we did see obviously Tyron Smith available, no offers. It would be a one year stopgap solution. Potentially even the same for Betonio as he's 33, though still very highly rated and is very much a steep drop off to the next couple guys. There are some younger around 26 year old options. We d I did take a peek at Drew Dahlman. He's just 
not a pass blocker at all and doesn't quite fit us. David Andrews is available, but again, probably a one-year solution. And then Wyatt Teller with three options or three offers currently in. I like him the best. He would be around for several years, but he doesn't have a whole lot of interest in us at this point. He has a superstar dev, but overall a pretty well-balanced guy. I would surely like to get Teller. Would be a massive boost to this offensive line. And they are currently looking for a two-year, little less than $30 million offer. I would even be fine bumping it up a little bit here. Make it a little bit of a sweeter deal. We still have plenty of money. We'll put in that offer. And where does that leave us? Currently tied with quite a few teams. So we could come back to this at a later point. And I think we're going to come back to Tyron Smith here because he doesn't have any interest currently. No team's putting in any offers. I know it's only a one year deal, but that could really buy us some time. Plus, with no one interest, we could kind of lower the bonus a little bit. We still have money in the bank. We'll put in a little bit of an offer here. We'll see if he takes it. And we do need someone at corner to put on the other side of a Debo. Now we have a couple options here. There is Taron Johnson, a little bit more of a zone cover guy, but does have good press at 85. There's also Byron Murphy Jr. Both are more so zone cover guys, but we're at least going to get a little bit better man coverage with Taron Johnson. And I feel like it's more along the lines of what I like. Plus that press is really good has interest so i think this will be our final offer here and we could yeah you know what what i think they'll be fine we'll keep it a one-year deal we'll just bump up the bonus a little bit try to get on top of some of these other teams and that will be our first set of targets so as a reminder again going after tyron smith going after wyatt teller replacing two guys on the offensive line is a need possibly maybe tua though i feel like we're probably gonna end up losing this one we could try to put in more I just don't know if it's the right idea to go after Tua. There's also Taron Johnson and Joshua Palmer. So we have the lead on most of these offers or tied or a little bit below in case of Tua. So let's evaluate here and all but one decide. So Tua did not come in. Plus we didn't get Wyatt Teller either. We got Tyron Smith and we got Joshua Palmer. So it looks like we also we didn't miss out on Tyron Johnson, though. The Cowboys are coming in with a stronger offer. So in terms of our next quarterback options, there is Trey Lance, who obviously going to be a little bit younger. I just don't believe he's going to be much of an improvement at all over Bo Harrell. There is Jared Goff. Now, Goff, does he have any tags? He is franchise quarterback, so he doesn't even have a mentor tag, which is a bit unfortunate. He's 30 years old, so not going to be for a long term but that short accuracy is spot on. Medium is even at a good spot. Deep is fine. Has good throw power. A little less mobility, similar to that of Bo Harrell. Do we put money in for a veteran quarterback? Or do we give Bo Harrell another year, see if he improves behind a better offensive line? And then if he doesn't, then go after another quarterback the season after. Or even make a trade. Again, where did Tua end up going? He went to the Texans. So that would make Stroud available in a trade, which is a possibility for us. This is now going into season three. It's not a rookie trying to trade for a rookie. So that is a possibility. I think we spend all of that money elsewhere. So going back to the offensive line again, we only brought in one teller told us no. So we still need help here. And there are some options. Garrett Boyles doesn't have any offers currently in a star dev on the older side, but I mean, Overall, he's seeing some regression here. So these numbers are some morale hitting him. So these numbers are actually a little bit better. If he wants to come in for a year, again, it's a stopgap solution. But it could be all right for us. Now, we do need someone to actually play a guard rather than a tackle spot. So what other what other options do we have? Lincoln Tomlinson is going to be a lower overall. David Andrews, only two offers. What is his ratings looking like at this point? Again, it's a stopgap spot for a year. Could shift him or even McAllister out to guard. I guess kind of depend on who has the better lead blocking, but does also look pretty good. And the best available right guard would be Kevin Zeitler, who's going to be a little bit older and a little bit lower overall. So let's try to put in a deal here for Andrews. He has interest in us, which will definitely help us out. We could boost up the number since we're not going after a quarterback. Again, it's a stopgap. Buy us some time. Could be a good deal to bring him in. 
Now an intriguing option here at corner is Benjamin St. Juiced. He has fantastic size. I love the build, 6'3", 200 pounds. And he has the press. The zone and man aren't awful. He's not much of an interception guy with 60 catching. What is the awareness and play rec? Well, play rec is gonna have a 74, not awful, and awareness is 73. What we could potentially do here is if we bring in St. Juiced with that press, if we go out in nickel or dime, he could go out on the outside. And then Rice could be one of the main receivers in any base packages and then come in and play nickel corner whenever we go out to nickel. So that may, he'll be continuing to develop. That might be a better option for us without hurting the development of a young guy. So St. Juiced, I think is gonna be our next target. And he currently does not have any other offers out. He's not extremely interested but hopefully he'll end up signing a deal here. We'll bump this up to two mil for the bonus. Four overall for two years. I mean, well, technically it'd be eight overall for two years, but you know what I mean. Four for one year, not too bad. Now we do need some help at safety. There's some guys who are available here. Ashton Davis has some speed. What is the zone? A 76 isn't awful. I just don't feel like that would end up being much of an upgrade over who we currently have in Durant. The only other options, you're gonna have Micah Hyde and Jimmy Ward. Kind of all three of those top guys, I view more as strong safeties. At strong safety, you don't really have much of free safety options. We did have Darnell Savage for a little while and he didn't do very well either. So it's not looking all too promising really for any new safeties that we could acquire unless we want to potentially bring in a corner who can move over to safety. There is Joan Williams, who doesn't have extreme speed nor great man coverage. Will Harris definitely played safety, I wanna say for the Broncos at one point. He's on the older side, only 72 overall. I don't think that'd be much of a boost either. So looks like we're not gonna be making any changes at safety. Now we did wanna bring in a guy to help solidify the run game, very similarly to what we did with Michael Pierce last year. Now he's 32 years old, his block shedding is an 81 with 83 awareness, 92 strength. DJ Reader is available. Both of them pretty similar builds. Reader is about 20 pounds lighter, but a few inches taller. Has more strength, the awareness is higher, and block shedding also really good. I think Reader could be a better option for us, trying to solidify that middle part of the defensive line as Luke Peak still develops a little bit. He has a couple offers in, but we could put in a decent offer. One year, bump up the salary a little bit. We'll put some feelers out with some of these picks. Now, as for tight end, we have Charles and he's played okay. I haven't seen a whole lot that would make me think he's like the guy moving forward. And Tommy Tremble is available with interest. I feel like I would like to bring in Tommy Tremble here. So let's bump around the numbers a little bit, a three year deal. I think that could be really solid for us and once again fills up our total amount allowed. So for this next round, again we have DJ Reader. We're about tied with the offer with the Falcons. We have Taron Johnson that we would like to bring in. If he selects us, fantastic, though the Cowboys technically have the better offer. Trying to bring in David Andrews, much better offer. Only offer for St. Juice and same for Tommy Tremble. So let's evaluate this group. All have decided. And we brought in some guys. Obviously we saw Tyron Smith earlier. We do bring in Taron Johnson. So I guess he decided he didn't want to go play for the Cowboys. We bring in David Andrews. So we already have a much improved offensive line. Palmer is in and we bring in St. Juice. So we're running four deep at cornerback. Potentially maybe could trade one. I don't know, we'll see. And Tommy Tremble is in. All in all, this has been a really good free agency. Already now I feel like we could use another receiver. So let's go take a look at receiver and maybe running back. And again, we are looking for guys to play on the outside. So focusing on that release, what are our options? Well, our OBJ is somehow still playing. Anyone else that looks interesting here? Kendrick Bourne, mm, Allen Robinson, need a little bit of some speed on the outside. There is Darius Slayton perhaps? He has some speed to his game. We don't have that down the field threat really at receiver. What are his overall ratings looking like? Also, does he have any, he's a bridge player, so he's not a mentor. Has some decent route running with some decent release. All in all, not awful. And I feel like the next best comparison 
would be Terrence Marshall. Now, Marshall is going to be on the, the younger side comparatively. Still has some decent speed, good route running. Hands in a solid spot as well with a good build. No offers in, not a whole lot of interest. But I have interest in Terrence Marshall. I've always liked him. We could boost up that money a little bit here. We'll put in that offer. We'll see what he decides. Now, at running back, I have some interest here in Antonio Gibson. 6'2", 220. He has the speed, has acceleration, awareness is there, and he's an overall very well-rounded running back. I feel like the compliment here to Cam Akers is really good. And injury rating, also solid, so we shouldn't have much of an injury problem. I think he could be a solid offer for us. Plus, on top of that, no one else has put in any offers. Again, he doesn't have a whole lot of interest in us, but I feel like it would fit really well. We'll lower that salary a little bit, bumping up the bonus, put in that offer, and we have three more that we could put out. And on top of bringing or trying to bring in Gibson, I think we're going to try to bring back Zonovan Knight as well. We no longer have a couple of our running backs. Knight played decently well, would give us a really solid group at running back, all very similar styles. We'll put in that offer as well. Now, as for a backup, potentially even a, a safety kind of guy here at quarterback, Kirk Cousins, not loving this because I'm not a big Kirko fan myself, but I feel like he could be a solid mentor for us and provide maybe some stability in that group considering we only have Bo Harold and we know what kind of season he just had. So let's put in this offer and also see if Kirko decides to join. And with the last open offer we have, I think we're gonna try to bring in Ashton Davis here. Provide a little bit of some competition with Kobe Durant and see what happens. He has some good zone coverage, some good speed. So all in all, plus interest, I think is a decent one for us to bring in. So we'll make that final offer. And again, that leaves us with five different options. Antonio Gibson, Terrence Marshall, Ashton Davis, Zonovan Knight, and Kirk Cousins. So for the last time in stage one, we will evaluate these offers and three decide Kirko still not sure nor Gibson. But that should mean that we did bring in some of those other guys. Marshall is in. We have Zonovan Knight and Ashton Davis. Skipped over him. Yeah, so we have all of them in. We'll probably end up pretty much wrapping up our free agency there. We brought in a lot of guys. We may still end up getting Antonio Gibson as well as Kirk Cousins. If we do, I will let you know. But besides that, I think it's time to shift focus towards the draft. And come the end of open for agency, Antonio Gibson does sign and we get our backup, potentially even safety net at quarterback in Kirk Cousins. So all in all, the open free agency does us, I feel like, very well. We bring in Tyron Johnson and David Andrews for the offensive line, an immediate impact boost. We also brought in two new corners, Tyron Johnson and then St. Juiced. We'll see if we end up keeping both. Again, I did like that option of having St. Juiced come in. And there was some interest in uh, Tyron Johnson. Potentially we keep him around, maybe a week eight deadline trade. I don't know. We will see. We also brought in a pair of new receivers, Joshua Palmer and Terrence Marshall. Both of them will play on the outside, leaving that slot spot for Nakua. Another secondary player that we brought in, Ashton Davis, to at least rival Kobe Durant for that free safety spot. We did bring in two new running backs, Zonovan Knight, and then we just talked about an Antonio Gibson. Another receiving target in Tommy Tremble, though he also can get stuck in well in the running game, helping block. And then, like mentioned, the Kirk Cousins, bringing him in to be that mentor, potentially a bridge quarterback if need be. So all in all, really good free agency for us. But will we be able to find some impact players in the draft like we did in the previous one? Just hopefully looking for some better. Now, obviously, we talked about not wanting to draft a quarterback. The options are OK. Potentially Dominic Sims could be really good if that medium accuracy is an A. But outside of that, like looking at the other things, I don't think he's going to be that great. Alex Carroll looks very similar to what we had in Bo Harold. And even worse for Kenny McLeod with that C short accuracy. So not too enthralled with really any of these options, which is why we thought about going after Tua, put in an offer that we were okay with, but once he wanted more, we were fine letting him go. Give Bo Harold another year behind a better offensive line. 
I don't think we need to go after any running backs. There are some decent ones here, but we have a great group now. As for receivers, if you want to build towards the future, I struggle with receivers because the ratings never look that great. But I do think there are some good options. Jarvis Spikes, I feel like, is my number one, even though the top guy is Alex Brownlee. I just don't like that catching in traffic is a D. Deep route running, C, like, I don't know. Not fantastic, but Jarvis Spikes, I feel like he could be pretty solid. He has a really good build, 6'2", 223, 21 years old, and he ran about a 442, 444. So all in all, I mean, really good athlete. Not great though at agility and acceleration. That's actually kind of slow, but I feel like there's some decency there. He's not a polished route runner. Is he a physical? Yeah, physical out uh, archetype with some speed. Is intriguing and would be something we would want on the outside though. Signing two younger receivers, I don't feel like it's a big need for us. If there are some guys later on, we could definitely take a look. Uh, Ed Jarrett has some intriguing ratings for sure out of Wisconsin. 6'4", 233, another physical, also 21 years old, just a little bit slower. But again, very similar style receiver here with a little bit better route running. So I actually feel like I might like Ed Jarrett a little bit better. But again, it's not a very impressive need for us. We brought in some young guys. Tight end, we could potentially use some more if there are some later round guys you want to go after. Glenn Tennant looks interesting. But with most of these guys, we haven't finished the scouting on a lot of them. Offensive line is definitely a group we could go after, and if we find guys better than who we currently have starting, they could definitely start. There are a lot of different options for us at left tackle. We've talked a lot about them, so not going to really talk a whole lot more about the offensive line. I feel like we didn't talk much about the defensive line, and again, potentially we could use some help there. I would love to find a dominant run stopper because we keep having to sign the veterans for that, but there's just no run stoppers that have an A. We, at best, we have a B, James Mooney, 6'4", 314, and he has some power moves that goes with it. So like, I'm sure he's fine, but that's a very similar skill set to what we drafted a lot of our uh, current young defensive linemen with. So looking for someone to be something different and doesn't really quite seem to be there. If we find something at defensive line, it's probably gonna be in the later rounds. And again, with a lot of guys we signed at corner, we don't have a big need to bring in a young corner. We have one really young guy in Rice going into his second year. Debo is in his, probably his peak, I would say. He was around, I want to say 26. Signed some other guys who are 26, I think, in 29 or 25 and 29. So we don't have a, a very dire need here. Though where we do have some need is at safety. And I would love to find some new safeties, if we could find some possible options. So Lamont Swain out of Wisconsin, 5'11", 197, has a really good group of skills here at the top. Take a further look at him. 21 years old out of Wisconsin, pretty good speed overall, really good athlete with some strength in there as well. Black shedding isn't fantastic. We don't quite know on the tackling. Awareness, good start to spot. I mean, oh, overall, I think he's a guy we should definitely take a further look at. So. We'll put him as one of our last remaining private workouts. Another option here, Nick Carson doesn't have great man coverage, but being a free safety, I like to keep him down the field. He has a much better size to me at six foot 206, 22 years old, a little bit slower, but still has some strength overall, still a really good athlete. Awareness is still there. Just might have a higher ceiling when it comes to zone coverage. Plus a second to third round. If we don't find anything we like in that first round, we could trade back, which would be fantastic. We even have another option potentially here in Brian Grayson, who looks like he could kind of be similar to a Nick Carson, just a step back. I feel like free safety definitely has a lot of options for us, but we also could use a strong safety. And I lean more towards the man coverage here because they're gonna be running a little bit more man, especially on some tight ends. They're the top guy, Daron Cherry, Seems intriguing. Is it Daron? Duron? I'm not sure. But Cherry has some intriguing ratings. Would like to see that zone a little bit higher, so I would lean maybe a little bit more towards Joey Briscoe, though doesn't have great size in comparison to Cherry. Cherry's like the archetype size, if not a little bit light. Also have Brandon Drake in the round three to four, who could potentially even be a little bit better than Cherry. 
He's similar height, a little bit lighter, 21 years old out of Clemson. Has some solid speed, strength there as well. Good athlete with awareness at an A. Tackling isn't fantastic with that at a C, but all in all, not too bad. He could very well be our last private workout. Brendan Drake. Other possible options, perhaps? Not really, so let's give the last one to Drake. And let's see if we have, it, if the Mock Draft 5 can really tell us anything more that we need to know. So in the last and final of the Mock Drafts, we see, obviously, we have the number one pick. We were the worst team in the NFL, and we are not going after a potential undrafted quarterback. So, ignore that. But in the top five here, we do see that there's a couple left tackles, and left tackle is definitely a need, or just offensive line in general is a need for us. There is also an edge rusher here in Alex Duvall. Has really good finesse moves, but then C block shutting and power moves. I don't see us taking anything like that early on. We reached on an offensive or defensive lineman last time. Did not pan out for us. Even worse here for Schaefer with the, again the A finesse, but then D for the block shutting and power moves. Not that great. So there's a lot of options. We might even be able to trade back a little bit. There are plenty of offensive linemen going throughout this first round. But if we don't need to reach on someone, we don't have to. So that is all nice to see. But I think it's time. I think we jump in, see what our options are, and maybe even make some trades. Now we do only have the one first round pick. So it's either pick now or make a trade. So if we wanted to see, again, what all of our options are, I feel like the most pressing need, if you could really say we have one, is offensive line. That's what this class is really good at. There are two top five left tackles, Antonio Hayden and Daquan Irwin. Now, Irwin is not a pass blocker, so already he's off my board. Is Antonio Hayden good at all? 6'6", 308, 21 years old out of LSU. He has pretty good strengths. Anywhere from 37 to 34 reps, runs a sub five second 40, good shuttle. I mean, all in all, really good athlete. However, he's going to struggle when it comes to power. Now, we've seen ourselves have issues against power, more so on the interior of the offensive line. And again, we don't have a dire need to go after this spot. And I don't see a blockbuster tackle here with the fact that he does have a glaring weakness. When it comes to left guard, there are some round one to two, so this would require a trade down, and our options would either be Bradshaw or Barden. Now, Bradshaw did rise up a little bit throughout the season, up 12 spots. Another 21-year-old at 6'4", 337 out of West Virginia. Not as strong, a little bit slower overall, just taking a step back at, as, as an athlete. And he does struggle when it comes to finesse, also struggles a little bit when it comes to power, so not liking this spot either. On the opposite side, right guard, we do have a couple first to second rounders. Both their top fours look very similar in Casey and Jacobs. Casey is a little bit older, 23 years old at 6'3", 336. A little bit better strength overall, a little bit better athlete going back to the first guy we looked at. And glaring issue at a pass block finesse with that being a D. So not great. At a guard spot, you to look more at the running game, and that's a bit of a question mark because we don't have the last and final information. Finesse is anywhere from a C to an F, with power being A to a C, and he is listed as a power blocker. Quinton Jacobs, younger, back to 21 at 6'6", 331. He has a little bit less strength, but an okay athlete around the board. Now, really good run block power, but next to no pass block finesse skills. So again, gonna be a power guy, which we could potentially use a little bit of a boost at, but again, not a dire need. Definitely some a spot we could trade back for. At right tackle, there is Thaddeus Sims. He is a true round one projection. We don't know about the actual talent because he only was 50% scouted, but 23 years old at 6'4", 315 out of Miami. Bench reps are not fantastic. More so looking like an agile guy with, yeah, we see the power a little bit lower for the run blocking, but pass blocking looks solid. Again, I don't think it's a top five guy. So really it comes down to the potential here at safety because the offensive lineman, not in love with. There is some decency there for sure. 
Now Lamont Swain, we did end up getting a little bit of some more information on, but we don't have the final cover skills, which is really unfortunate. Somehow with that 10% cover skills for a safety, we still don't know. But it is an A to a C for zone, and then a B to a C for man. So not bad there. As for Nick Carson, one of the other guys we were interested in, he ends up having much worse cover ratings. His kind of end up being where the bottom is for Lamont Swain. So Swain definitely seems like the better of those two. As for strong safety, we did take a look at uh, Brandon Drake. And yeah, he kind of takes a little bit of a step back as well. Now you look maybe back towards these top guys, though Drake does have better zone coverage than Cherry, the top guy. But potentially the man could be a little bit better. It's kind of a little bit of a play there. But it does look like the better option for us could potentially be Lamont Swain, though we did also bring in some safety help. So all in all, we don't have a direct need. And I think we could definitely go with a trade down. So with the very first pick in the draft, who's coming at us with the best selection? Well, we could drop down to 22 with the Bears and pick up a first round in the next two years, plus a current two, and then some later six and sevens. Not too bad. Broncos coming at us with a weak offer. Not fantastic for the Texans. Vikings putting in a good amount here, a 14th this year, picking up another first round in the next two seasons. Still a current two. A current four and a six with so the Vikings giving us a whole lot for this draft. Titans, not awful, but not the best. Saints, a lot coming here too. But we don't get three first round picks, so not my favorite. We would get three for the Raiders, but not great for the other options. Patriots, even worse there. Lions coming out of strong, though... Actually, that is a really enticing offer. You get the first rounders in the next three seasons, including this one dropping back to 30. Plus, you also get a second rounder for the next three seasons, including this one at spot 62. Very intriguing. We'll have to keep that one in mind. Very similar, but a little bit better, I would say, actually, with the Jaguars, as that is the 21st and 53rd. San Fran, not going to trade with them. They're one of our biggest rivals, so that's not happening. Falcons, not as good as some of the other offers. Eagles, while enticing, not as good. And the Colts, not as good. So it does look like the Jaguars might be the best option. Picking up some seconds and some firsts. I think that's what we go with. We'll give it to the Jags. We'll drop back to 21. Now, of course, we have to see who the Jags go after. So with the first pick in the NFL draft, the Jaguars trade up to select Alex Duvall, left end out of Duke. I didn't think he was all that good. We'll definitely could take a look at the end. But as this is BPA, we're going to drop back to 21, see what's available, and then go from there. Now, on the board, the top two options are both offensive linemen in Correa and Overton. I don't really like either of them. There is the running back in Donovan Casey, who did look intriguing, not all too interested. There is Duran Cherry available, and potentially he could be solid. After that, you're gonna drop into the round one to twos. Now we don't have a very large gap between this pick and our next pick, the first in the second round. Again, safety is a bit of a concern here for us. But who has the better option, or who is the better option for us as the other safeties? No, just kidding, Lamont Swain is still there. And he could be really solid. Now, they don't expect him to go for another 23 picks, or at least he's the 23rd currently ranked. So we might not have to go after him here, but maybe with that first pick in the second round is a good possibility. Now, I wasn't quite finding a guy I liked here early on, and the Colts have an interesting selection here for us if we make a trade. We would pick up their 37th overall second round pick, their 69th overall third, and their 133rd fifth. I think that could be really good for us. There is some good later talent. I don't like the top end guys. I think they're lacking. So I think we're gonna make another trade down here. We're going almost, we are going out of the first round entirely here due to how good that free agent class was for us. 
So we'll drop. Hopefully one of those safeties we like are still there. And then we have a whole range of possibilities after. So once again, we'll jump forward, make our pick. And as we do get to the second round, Lamont Swain is still there. We have the first, fifth, and 21st pick here in the second round. Now, I feel like Lamont Swain is definitely high on the board here for us when it comes to receiver, because we could also potentially still bring in, a, bring in a receiver. There is Jarvis Spike still available. I kind of liked Ed Jarrett a little bit more. He's also still available. Well, potentially we could even go after both of them, but I feel like they're very similar second to third rounder. And after taking a full look at what all of our options are, I think we're gonna go with Lamont Swain here. Try to find a free safety for the future. Obviously we brought in some guys. Don't think they're really guys for the future. Lamont Swain has that ability with a little bit of some strength mixed with a really good athletic base. He could be really good for us. Expect him to fly around. Hopefully we can shore up some of that tackling. But our first selection is going to be a normal dev free safety. Has 90 speed, 66 strength, 91 jumping, 86 change of direction with 92 agility and 89 acceleration. We'll see where he fits in compared to the guys we currently have. And as we will jump forward a couple of selections to our next pick, Joey Briscoe, the strong safety does end up going. Then a DT and Chris Clemens out of Auburn's. The Eagles go with left guard Barden out of Ole Miss. I wasn't too big of a fan on Barden, but now we're back on the board. And as mentioned, there are some options here at receiver. Jarvis Spikes at Jarrett both look pretty intriguing. There is also Luke Hayden who looks intriguing, but I don't like the size. It's the size of a lot of guys that we had before who didn't quite end up doing much of anything. So don't want to go there. Now, I did find a DT who does look interesting. Obviously, we have a whole bunch of defensive linemen right now, but Joey Sheridan, 6'4", 303, 22 years old, listed as a run stopper. Remember that. Who runs a sub five second 40 with near 40 reps on the bench. All in all, a fantastic athlete. Again, listed as a run stopper, has C block shedding with the finesse moves and power moves both at a B. That looks really intriguing. He's listed as a round two to three. Awareness is a little bit on the lower side, but if he's available with our next selection, I feel like I would really like to pick him up. He's the top DT left on the board. He could go next. Again, it's just not a big area of need for us. So. What I think we're going to do is with us having the fifth selection here, I feel like I want to go after Ed Jarrett. He's young. He has the size, good speed for this size. Good. I mean, all around pretty good athlete. Obviously, the three cone and the 20 yard shuttle aren't great, but he has the better route running compared to spikes with both C for deep, medium and then B for short. He has C release, so not awful. The hands are there. All in all, I think this could be a really good guy to select. Give us a young guy to try to develop on the outside. And then with the next selection, we go after the DT. Could be a little bit of a reach here, but I'm finally going to go with a receiver early, expecting good value. And if it doesn't hit, I'm going to be very disappointed. But Ed Jarrett is a hidden dev with 89 speed, 89 acceleration, 88 agility, 91 change of direction with 93 jumping and 70 strength. So dude could jump while he's already 6'4", already seeing a red zone threat day one. Now we just have to hope that DT is still there as we jump forward. Again, we're going BPA. So if he's not there, we could find good guys, hopefully at other spots. And he did end up going, unfortunately. Just day three's left. Now, are there any other options potentially to look decent at right? No, what about at left? There's a decent option here in Andy Weiner, but for a different style player, we're looking for some big guys down the middle. So it does look like we missed out on any possibility there. The day threes, while there's some talent, it's not gonna be the same quality. Now I know we don't need any more corners, but trying to build a good group for the future. There is a really intriguing player. Now we're only 50% scouted, so it's a little bit of a toss up. But Josh Conley, a man-to-man -man corner who is 6'3", 193, 22 years old, out of Oklahoma State. 
Fantastic 40 sub 4-4. Four four. He's not very strong, which is a little bit concerning, but all in all, pretty good athlete. And the press we don't know, but at worst, it's a C. Man coverage is an A as well as catching. Tackling is a B. Zone is B to a D. So that could range dramatically, but I still think he is worth a pick here. And we're in the later part of the second round. He's a two to three, so I don't want to miss out on this one. So Josh Conley's a selection, a hidden dev, 94 speed with 94 acceleration. Jumping isn't fantastic, 84. But change of direction at a 90, agility 88. Either way, we're building a very good, youthful core here. Now in the third round, the first pick of the third round, I think we go offense. And funny enough, the last pick and this pick would both fit very well with the Central Plains States Only Challenge, as we're gonna go with center David Williams. A round three to four, so it's gonna go at the very top end of that projection. He's 6'4", 301, 21 years old. He has really good strength, 37 to 38 bench reps. All in all, fantastic athlete. Now he's gonna struggle a little bit with the power. He's another agile guy, but overall I still think he could be pretty solid for us. At least, at least really good depth. Someone who could sit on the bench a year, maybe two, and then potentially start. It's kind of what this draft is all about. Building that base to really build upon in the future so we don't have to rely on so much of signing older guys. So David Williams, another hidden dev, 92 strength. All in all, I'm pretty good for a center. And we're really stacking up some good young players here that's gonna rival some of these older guys that we signed. Now, sticking with that same line of thought of trying to build a good group of backups to develop, going back to linebacker, a group that we don't need to add any starters to. We have the starters, but there are two intriguing talents, Jason Boss and Arthur Solomon. Now, I'm leaning towards the side of Solomon because this dude is extremely fast, runs about as fast as a running back, 4.51 to 4.46. He's also young, 21 years old, 6'2", 235. Now, he has some injury concerns with that being an F, but he doesn't have to start immediately. We have our starters. He has good block shedding, good zone. Not gonna be a fantastic man guy, that's C to an F, but that speed plus the strength, I think that is really solid. We need some depth at middle linebacker, so Arthur Solomon is the normal dev. Unfortunate but is an 89 speed, 77 strength with 91 acceleration. Dude's at least an athlete for sure. Now with the first pick in the fourth round, we're gonna go back to the offense and another center. Most likely these guys aren't gonna actually end up playing center, but Calvin Hobart, 6'3", 301, 21 years old, out of UCLA. Decent strength as he had 37 to 34 bench reps, runs a sub five second 40. Overall, again, really good athlete. He's another finesse guy, but that finesse is really good. Both pass block finesse and run block finesse are both A's. The power a little bit behind, but both C's not awful. We saw some of that with the first round talent. Now the awareness is gonna need to see a little bit of some improvement, but overall, I think this would be a solid depth guy for us. So we'll go with that selection back in the hidden dev category, 89 strength with 72 speed. We'll find out the rest of the ratings, hopefully shortly. Now into the fifth round with pick four, we're gonna go back to receiver in Dante Ayers out of TCU, bringing in a lot of bigger kind of style guys, which is a big difference compared to how this team originally started. He's the physical archetype, 6'4", 218, 22 years old, but he still runs a pretty good 40 at 445, has some strength in there, 16, 17 bench reps, still not great at the three cone or 20 yard shuttle, but I see a guy here with a lot of potential. He has the catching, he has the release. The route running is not fantastic. D for both deep and short with F medium, but he does have a run block. So I'm potentially wondering if there's maybe a chance he puts on a little bit of weight, maybe even plays some tight end as well. Who knows, but we need the depth at receiver because we don't have a lot of young guys as all of the guys we had have left. So Dante Ayers is the selection. He's a normal dev with 91 speed, 68 strength, and then 91 for both jumping, change of direction, and acceleration with 88 agility. Still looks like a really solid athlete with a nice size. 
Now with the very next selection, we have an interesting player. At left end, an undersized guy, definitely an outside linebacker in Steven Stewart. A day three projection. 5'11", 256, I mean, that is really small. He's also 23, so on the older side. He has some speed. He's not the strongest, but he's quick with some power. And that power is an A. A power moves with C finesse moves. We don't know about the block shedding. That is C to an F. But he also has A tackling. This is a very intriguing player that I just think is at the wrong position. And we could definitely use some help on the outside linebacker spot, finding some actual young guys to develop. So Steven Stewart, welcome to the squad <laughs> and another hidden dev. 78 speed with 71 strength, 82 acceleration and 78 agility. We're just raking in all the hidden devs. We'll see what their talent is and hopefully it's good. And with our last and final of the fifth round selections, we have two sixth rounds in there, the first and second in the sixth round. We're gonna go with a running back that we can maybe develop a little bit. He's on the older side, 23 in Bryce Williams out of Ohio State. I just feel like he very much fits the group. Has some decent 40 yard, but like nothing burner. Has the power. All in all, I think he could be pretty decent for us. He has some ability to catch the ball as well. I don't think he's gonna be a spectacular running back for us, but maybe someone that could go on the practice squad and we could start developing. So that's what we go after here with a normal dev 88 speed with 70 strength, 90 acceleration. That was not too bad. 86 change of direction. Agility's 85 with 79 jumping. Now with that first selection in the sixth round, we're going back to defensive line here. DT in Dwayne Woodyard. It's actually more of a right or left end at 23 years old. 6'1", 297. Now he has a whole lot of speed here. Around a 4'7", or even faster. Not as much strength, but very quick, agile guy with A finesse moves. Now he's not coming with any power moves, that's an F. And the block shedding is either a D or an F. So he's a one trick pony, but that one trick he does pretty well. And in the sixth round, solid spot to go after that. So we'll select Woodyard, not a hidden dev, a normal dev with 80 speed and 80 strength. And with this last selection, let's take a shot. At a developmental quarterback here, he's a potential undrafted, but there's some intrigue in Greg Hannon. 6'2", 228, 22 years old, out of Purdue, listed with the archetype as a strong arm. Now that doesn't quite make sense because his throw power is marginal. He has a little bit of some mobility, running about a 4'8", 5", not very strong, 7 to 5 bench reps, but the other skills, intriguing other physicals intriguing the skills themselves we do know he has b for medium accuracy and then both deep and short are a to c could be fine could be bad c awareness at least a developmental quarterback to put on the practice squad and he seems like he might be the best of the bunch so greg hannon a normal dev with 82 throw power and 76 speed not too bad probably a practice squad guy but that rounds out this draft class and without further ado, it's time to meet that draft class officially. Find out their rating, see if how many we hit big on and how many we maybe missed out on. As we take a look, we end up with a actually really, really good draft class. In the, in the entire group we had, I mean, it wasn't until the fifth round that we really started dipping down into the 60s. Gannon, De or Hannon, definitely not great, 60 overall, but we'll get to him at the end. Overall, really good looking class here. As Lamont Swain, a 74 normal, so he's gonna come in essentially the same overall as that of Kobe Durant. However, he has the speed, I'm pretty sure he has better cover skills with some hit power. Awareness, getting a nice little boost there. He could definitely be a day one starter for us, and we didn't have to pick at all in the first round. This is all second round or later. Add for as for Ed Jarrett, 74 hidden dev. So 274 is off the bat. Really good catching. The route running is not bad. Release, not bad either. He's definitely gonna be finding or fighting for a starting spot. We obviously brought in some guys, but it looks solid. After that, we actually drafted our highest rated player at a spot we didn't need to go after. 
And that is Josh Conley, a 78 with the boost, an 80 overall corner. Hopefully he has a better year one than Rice. He definitely doesn't have the press. So he is a slot corner, which is just gonna give us an even harder time finding a spot for Rice. But those cover skills are fantastic off the get go. Tackling at a 62, honestly, he could play safety. He could play a free safety spot too. What is his hit power? 64, he's not a strong safety. Injury is an 84, so he has some injury problems. But we gotta find a way to get Josh Conley on the field. That is one heck of a pick. Moving on from him to the center, David Williams, a 73, true overall. Again, hidden dev. He's gonna need to work a little bit on that power. As expected, looks very similar to how we drafted McAllister. So we're finding a lot of very similar linemen. We're just gonna need one of them to take that step forward. But he definitely has a way to potentially get on the field. We obviously brought in the older guys and we're gonna, we're gonna rock with the older guys. As for Solomon, again, we took a shot on him. He's a 75 true overall, a normal dev. We're, we hit big in this draft class. He could play day one as well if we have any injuries, hopefully we don't, to the linebacker group. Dude could fly around, he could tackle, he could shed some blocks, he even has some cover skills. I mean, what is the man? 54, he's not gonna be a strong safety. His catching is a 71. So we've gotta find ways to get these guys out here. We're, we're gonna be rotating a lot this year. The second center we brought in is also a 73, hidden dev. He has slightly better ratings, we'll say. The strength is gonna be a little bit lower, but overall, this class is looking really impressive. We have a lot of young talent here. Dante Ayers took a shot on him, a 69 overall. Definitely needs to work on the route running, but he has the release. He has a way to essentially get open with that release. He has the hands. He could jump at 6'4". I mean, we found some guys for sure in this class. Took a shot on Steven Stewart. He ends up being a 70 true overall, though he's gonna have to change positions. But <laughs> 79 power moves. Don't ask him to shed a block to stop the run. That's a 61 with a plus three. So that's not gonna happen, but straight around the edge with some speed, plus the power. Got yourself a dude, late on for sure. Past him, we went after the running back and the running back wasn't fantastic. A 65, we didn't expect he would be fantastic, but a developmental guy who has some trucking, mixed, win, mixed in with some ability to juke. Not great at spinning, but all in all, a solid guy to try to develop with good hands. He'll be a pretty good practice squad running back, potentially could get picked up by another team. So need to be cautious with that. As for the DT in Woodyard, who is straight up just a finesse rusher, gonna be actual left or right end. 75 finesse moves. Again, don't ask him to shed a block to stop the run. That's a 58 with a plus three, but he could get around the edge, strictly to rush the passer. Developmental guy there, not too bad. And then the quarterback to round it off with Greg Hannon. 6'2", 228, and you know, the accuracies aren't too bad. They're getting a little bit of some boost, but all in all, not awful. Definitely going to the practice squad at a 60 true overall, but a guy to have there isn't bad. Fills the spot of Stetson Bennett. And overall, again, a really good draft class with the surprise of Josh Conley being the highest rated. Really good, though we do need to check out, um, can't even remember now who we traded for or traded with, Jaguars? I think they moved up to select uh, their outside edge guy. Yeah, Alex Duvall is only a 73 overall. At least he's the hidden dev, but they gave up their next three, including this draft, their next three seasons, first and second rounders. And they got a guy who has some finesse moves, but that's about it. I think we won that trade hands down. As for the quarterbacks that were available, as I mentioned, I didn't think they were that good. And it looks like the highest rated that I've seen was Kenny McLeod, a 77 normal dev. And he, he was young, but these ratings, if you flip them, are the exact same for the accuracies, at least, as what we had in Bo Harold. He's just a down the field guy with great throw power. 
Not a lot of mobility, so you're going to have to put a good offensive line around him. That's kind of what I feel like the Packers are used to, so not too bad there. Anyone else higher than the 77 at quarterback? No. So, yeah, I feel like we were perfectly fine skipping out on drafting your guy. Now, we were interested in Jarvis Spikes, and he ends up being a 74 hidden dev. So we really could have went with either him or Ed. I feel like we got the guy with some better route running. Release is pretty similar. I don't think you really could have missed out on going with either of these receivers. We were fine either way. So that works out well for us. Now, as for the block shedding, I had talked about I wanted to find a guy who could just stuff the run, and this class really didn't have it. The highest rated was a 78 in a Cordell Barclay. There was 76s. And honestly, a lot of these, the yeah, all these top guys, they're not even at DT. You have to scroll down. The top DT run stopper is Mike Wilson at a 75. So, again, not the class we were looking for for that specific need, but I don't feel like you really could have gone wrong with what we ended up getting. And that uh, DT was a 74 overall. All in all, that was, I think, a fantastic draft for us. Really good off season. We're going to tweak the roster a little bit in between this episode and the next episode. So definitely make sure you're hitting that barrack on the bottom right. Scroll down, hit the subscription button. They both do the same thing into subscribing to this channel. And make sure you tap that bell icon so you're notified of when these videos go live. I will sort out the roster, might make some appearance changes, switch around some numbers, sign some undrafted free agents. We're already at 75 players, so it is going to be a strict season. Moving into season three. Because the first two years, we were kind of lenient. We let players develop where we could, let them prove to us over and over again that they should not have been starting. And with the depth this team now has, if you don't perform, you're getting subbed out. And with us going to have even more players after I check the uh, free agency for those undrafted. We're going to have to cut down this roster and some guys who have been on this team that you might not have thought have been or possible for cut candidacy. They very well might be. So again, make sure you stick around as we start season three, a new spark of hope for this Rams franchise. So we'll see you guys for week one next time tomorrow. Bye.